Right, we're in the shop today. This is a Chevy 4.3 liter V6 motor, about a 98-ish model out of an S10 truck. And it is what's eventually going to be going in Jezebel, along with a 700R4 transmission. I got this motor for 200 bucks from a guy down near Lynn, Missouri. And he buys vehicles and either fixes them up to sell or if they're too far gone, he parts them out. This was out of a supposedly a good running truck. The truck was just too far gone to make any money off of, so he parted it out. So the plan with this is um, I have to take the whole front assembly off to get everything else off, but all this electronic gobbledygook intake, all that crap is coming out, distributors coming out, and we're going to be putting in, putting on a uh, four barrel Lunum intake carburetor Eldebrock performer. And we're going to be putting in an HEI distributor to get away from all that computer driven stuff. I do have, I purchased some new gaskets, uh, rear main seal. I've already pressure washed this thing off a little bit, uh, but it looked like it was leaking out the rear main seal pretty bad. Oil pan gasket, valve cover gaskets, um, of course, intake gaskets for the intake. It did not look like, I know, I probably should go ahead and change the front main seal too. And I might. It just involves pulling that harmonic balancer off. And I don't, I'll have to, I don't have a puller for that. But, that's beside the point. Um, anyway, it come with all the accessories. Uh, AC compressor's been open there, so I'm sure it's junk. But that's okay. Because... Uh, at least it has the bracket for AC because eventually I would like to put aftermarket AC in the car. So that will already have a mounting spot for the AC compressor. I do not need the power steering pump. We're not going to put power steering in this car. So I'll have to see about getting a belt for power steering delete for one of these. That shouldn't be too bad to do, I don't think. And since we're not going to worry about power steering, when I have this front assembly off, I'm probably going to cut this bracket uh, right below this mounting bolt. Maybe, because it's got other ones up here, so I don't need the bottom section of that bracket. If I'm pointing and not showing. Uh, so we may, I may just cut that along there to get rid of that excess bulk out of there. We'll see. If that's feasible to do or not. Um, but this is the same thing I did for the motor in the Scout. Because the Scout has a complete um, drivetrain chassis, the whole nine yards, out of a 2000 uh, S10 Blazer. The only thing I did different was I took the... It, I bought the Blazer for a thousand bucks. Running. Transmission was fried in it. It pulled enough to get the blazer up on the trailer. Um, but I didn't want an automatic transmission in the Scout anyway. So I put a 5-speed Alvin S10 pickup in there. And that all worked out good. Um, I've got the 4-barrel intake. Same setup on that truck. I can tell you the parts when I did that 2-3 years ago was a hell of a lot cheaper than they are now. I think just, yeah, just the intake alone for this is like, close to 500 bucks so that's the priciest part of it but anyway i'm gonna work on getting all the gobbledygook off of this thing that we don't need and uh once i get closer well uh when i pull the valve covers off and stuff like that i'll show you what the inside of the motor looks like because i myself don't know i do know i verified it does turn over and he seemed like a pretty upstanding guy. He said it did uh, drive and run. He pulled it into the shop to tear it down. So that's about all I care about. I think he said it had like 180,000 miles on it. Uh, the Scout motor had 180,000 on it when I did it. So 
I'm not too worried about it. Parts for these are relatively cheap and they're pretty easy to work on. So that's a lot better than the flathead six that's in there. That still has a dead cylinder. Um, it does pull itself around some, but not enough to drive. So not worrying about all that junk. We're going to wind up pulling all that out of there anyway. So we'll get to that eventually. But for now, I'm going to work on getting this thing tore down where I need it. Right after a little bit of work, wasn't too hard to do. I've got this little V6 top side tore down. And it actually doesn't look too bad inside. It's not all gunked up. But, uh, it still has oil in it. And I pulled the dipstick. The oil is actually really clean in it. I had a little bit of moisture in it from where I pressure washed it. But other than that, yeah, this thing actually looks pretty clean. And from what I can see down at the cam, uh, the cam looks good from what I can see. Like I said, I whirled it over and got it on top dead center on number one, which this is number one right here. And uh, everything looks good. Now, there are timing marks down here. There are not any degree marks because this would have been all computer controlled. Uh, now this harmonic balancer does have two different marks and I screwed up and marked the wrong mark the first time so I blacked it out with black paint and then when I was wheeling it over by hand to make sure it was on top dead center I found out I had that it was actually needed to be on this timing mark so took some paint stick and painted that up so I can actually see it um, now, with there not being any degree marks, uh, the, about the only way to time these is with a digital timing light with a dial indicator. Um, so you can use the dial degrees to set your timing that way. Uh, that's how I did the scout motor. And that's how I'll do this one. Uh, but yeah, everything looks pretty good. Looks a lot smaller once you get all that junk off of there. Um, I need to get a pipe plug for this because I won't be using that. That goes to exhaust. I had a pipe that ran up to the intake. I need to get a pipe plug for, well, I've got a pipe plug, but I need to seal it and put it in for the cam sensor or the knock sensor, I guess, probably is actually what that was. And then I'll pull this out. This is for the oil pressure. I'll pull this out and put a nipple, a little taller nipple, and some fittings for a uh, uh, analog oil pressure gauge in the car um, but yeah the little dude's looking pretty good uh, like I said the water jacket ports they always get gunked up but I'll work on getting things cleaned up and I'll flip it over I got drain the oil and I'll flip it over pull the oil pan off I cannot do the rear main seal with it on the engine stand so I'll have to do that uh, when I take it off the engine stand. But I'll get the oil pan pulled off of it. It's got this uh, oil cooler line. Uh, well, these are actually probably for oil filter relocation. We're not going to use those. Hopefully, I think I should be able to once I take the bracket off down here. This housing comes off. And I believe you can uh, thread an oil filter right on there, I think, if I... Don't quote me 100%. But. Uh, and then this is the temp sensor. We'll pull that out when it comes time, and we'll put a manual temp gauge sensor in there. But, yeah, well, motor's looking pretty good. I think I did all right for 200 bucks. So uh, I get things cleaned up and oil drained, and I'll show you the bottom side when I get the oil pan off. All right, we're out here messing with this 4.3 liter Chevy motor. V6 that's going to wind up going in the Plymouth eventually. Uh, I've been tearing it down, going to put new gaskets and stuff on it, and a four barrel intake, an HEI distributor, and all that good stuff. Got the oil pan off, and first thing I notice is that right there that's just a little bit of a little bit of gunk. You look down in the pan. Yeah, 
there's there's a little bit of gunk down in there which you know that's kind of be expected a little bit I'm sure uh, but as far as I can see any of the cam lobes that I can see down in there they all look pretty good um, what I can see of the cylinder walls look pretty good I don't see any major scratches I still actually see some cross hatching on the cylinder walls so we're just gonna clean this up and put new gasket on the old pan put it back together and cross our fingers and hope for the best I think it'll be just fine if not we'll worry about that later but uh, I'll get that mess cleaned out of there and get everything else cleaned up good and we'll start working on putting stuff back on it all right right we are finally back in the shop working on Plymouth stuff today <clears throat> a little bit I've uh, been kind of working on the 4.3 liter v6 getting things ready to go on it to go in the Plymouth and um, I did finally break down decided to get a new timing cover uh, comes with gasket already pre-installed on it silicone gasket new front main seal it even came with a sensor block off which is cool because I don't need the sensor um, so I got that put on uh, the timing chain is just a little sloppy but we'll pretend we never saw that and I got the oil filter nipple got it put in this had a relocation kit or cooler kit whatever you want to call it uh, where there was a, just a little block here we had two lines coming off of it and you unbolt that and there's a gasket down in here you got to get out and you order this oil filter nipple and you screw it down in using a large allen key to put it down in there and now I can screw a regular oil filter on there and not have to worry about a, re a relocation kit. I've got the oil pan cleaned up pretty good. Uh, it was pretty caked up with oil in and out. It could be a little better, but it'll be okay. I'll work on getting the groove cleaned out real well where the gasket goes. But my plan is for now, I'm going to work on getting this all back together with the new gaskets on it. Get the oil pan back on it. Get the oil filter on it. I think I might have a starter that'll fit it. Uh, this is a 98 4.3 liter. Um, a lot of the mid to late 90s starters for 350s and 4.3s would interchange. The motor that's in the 48 ton truck is a 94 crate motor and somewhere up in my stash of crap probably that box right there on the bottom is a starter that might work on this 4.3 so it's worth a try uh, but anyway i'm gonna work on getting stuff cleaned up on the block and on the oil pan here work on getting this bottom side buttoned up i do have a new rear main seal but obviously we cannot do that with it on the engine stand. So we'll do that when it comes time to take this off the engine stand. Um, I'll have to get motor mounts for it because I do not have any of those yet. But yeah, for now, let's just work on getting oil pan stuff cleaned up and seeing if this starter will fit. And I'll catch back up with you. All right. Got the oil pan and oil filter all bolted on. Uh, when I was taking this thing apart, I noticed that the oil pan was actually missing a bolt at the front. And then the other side was really loose. And the oil pan bolts weren't really super tight. Uh, so my suspicion is somebody had replaced this front timing cover because there were no dowel pins in the block either and to do that in the engine in the truck or vehicle 
you loosen up the oil pan and pull it down a little bit to get that timing and you pull the dowel pins out of the block that way you can kind of slide that timing cover on and I suspect they just never tightened the pan bolts back up because this thing was covered in oil on the bottom side so I suspect that's how that come to be so I don't have a starter I've got two different starters up there on the shelf one of them's for that 94 350 and the 48 the other one is for my 08 Silverado 5.3 liter neither one of them will work so I didn't wouldn't I didn't have any starter bolts anyway so I'll have to get a starter for this and starter bolts I did find um, in my gasket stuff I have water pump gaskets to put the water pump back on so I don't have to worry about buying those so now I'm gonna work on getting the top end done get the harmonic balancer put back in I'll get the new intake put on the new distributor put in clean up the valve covers I've got new gaskets for those and I'll have this top end pretty well done um, I got a cheap oil uh, oil pressure gauge to put in there because my goal is to get this together and I've got a junk four barrel carburetor on the shelf over there it won't run very well but it'll at least run enough to fire this thing up on the stand because uh, I don't even know if this thing actually runs I basically bought it from a junkyard for 200 bucks and he said it ran he drove it in the shop to pull it out so but we don't know the condition of it really so uh, I don't have a starter so I have to wait till I get one of those but we can at least get everything else done uh, get the initial timing set get it on top dead center drop the distributor in and get it close uh, but That is my goal for today. So I'll keep working on that. and I'll bring you back here in a bit Right, we got the intake all put on I Took the old distributor out of the 4.3 and busted the top off of it and ground the um, <laughs> Drawing a blank anyway Drown the gear off the ground the gear off the bottom of the distributor so it would not interfere with the cam and We're gonna see if I get some oil pressure built up here We can see that real well or not There we go That's pumping up pretty good Starting to get some oil on some of the lifters there, on some of the rockers. There we go, there's some more pumping up. Right, looks like all the rockers on this side are getting oil. Looks like we've got decent oil pressure. Oh, my battery just died. So I'll get get this thing on top dead center on number one, and we'll stick the distributor in. There's the my tool where I ground off the gear on the bottom um, with Chevy's you pretty well need to have the outer part of the distributor to seal so it will actually make oil pressure uh, a lot of people try and use just the rod itself and it won't won't build good oil pressure doing that so We've got this little nifty tool that should work on about anything GM so we're gonna keep that handy I will get this all cleaned up 
and make sure she's on top dead center and we'll try and stab the distributor in here in just a little bit so progress being made all right we've got new gaskets on the valve covers valve covers cleaned up it's kind of funny you can see these little grooves on here it's where rodents or something have chewed on it got a couple of spots here where they've been chewed on intake on valve covers on carburetors just sitting on there distributor is in uh, the new timing cover on harmonic bouncer and pulleys back on uh, we primed it for oil pressure had good oil pressure had all oil coming through all the rockers on the one side i'm sure the other side did too um got the distributor kind of set for some decent timing to initially fire up uh, i need to get the front accessories back on get them cleaned up a little bit i've got this port right here i'm gonna have to fill in because that straight open exhaust so we're gonna put that in there and weld around it and hopefully i'll take care of that but yeah we're getting closer i'll get i'll work on later this afternoon getting the front accessories put on here i'm not going to use a power steering pump but i'm going to put it on uh, just simply for uh, the belt purposes i am going to put the old ac compressor on it because i would like to eventually put ac on this car in this car um so we'll go ahead and put that on for belt purposes as well. I'll have to look and see if I have any plugs to put in some of these ports that I'm not going to be using. I'll have to get a water fill neck. Um, but yeah, we're getting closer. I would like I said, I want to, I'll get the front accessory drive put on. And I'll have to get a starter. And then I want to try and fire this thing up on the engine stand. Uh, the oil pressure was a good sign. I like that. Um, but yeah, so far we're plugging along. So till the next one. Thanks.